Today I'm gonna to be doing a detail strip of the Glock 19. Uh, to make note, I'm not going to be doing a full disassembly of my upper slide because I just put a new red dot optic on and in order to remove all the inside components, I would have to remove the red dot because of how it covers the back plate. And I have it zeroed for a competition that I'm shooting tomorrow morning. So please forgive me. All right, so first thing you do before handling any weapon system is you clear the weapon system ensuring that it's safe. So ensure the weapon's on safe, which you cannot do with a Glock because the safety is built inside of the trigger. You're going to lock the slide to the rear and conduct a three point safety check. Your chamber, bolt face, ejection port slash magazine well. Once you've ensured the weapon is in safe, you're then going to send the slide forward, take a well aim shot down range. Next thing I'm going to do is a added step because of the new red dot is I'm going to remove the battery pack from my new red dot. I'm going to place the battery pack over to the side, make a metal note of where it is. I'm going to pull the slide back just enough to activate the slide release so I can push the slide forward. Then going to take out the components of the slide, just do a field strip for now, showing three major components of my Glock 19. Move that to the side. Now for the detail strip of my lower receiver, the first pin you're always going to remove is going to be the block pin. The block pin is located on the top portion of the lower receiver. The reason why is because it's in a sequential order. If you do it out of order, then it will be more difficult to get the parts in. So I'm going to push the pin out of my block pin out of the lower. I'm going to put my pin in its own compartment, separating it so I do not get my pins mixed up even though they are different sizes. The next pin is going to be the trigger pin. Trigger pin is located right here. In order to do that, you have to take the slide lock and hold it at a just high enough angle. You're gonna have to play with it and figure it out to see which angle it will be to move the pin out. So I have it I'd say about an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch just above the lower receiver in order to push the pin out. Notice how this is a different pin. There's two indentions built inside of it and it's also a different size pin, but I'm still gonna locate it in a different container. That way I do not get it mixed up. I'm then going to remove my slide lock. Slide lock I'll locate with the same pin that it is with. Next thing I'm going to remove is going to be the third pin, which is the trigger housing pin located in the back portion or the beaver tail area of the Glock. Once I then remove that pin, I'm then going to locate it in its own area away from my other two pins. Next piece that's going to come out is going to be the block. Block comes out very simple, slides right out. I'm going to locate the block with its respective pin. Next is going to be the full trigger and trigger housing assembly. Notice how it is all one piece. Uh, one thing I'm not going to remove today is the trigger from the trigger housing. Just because of the competition tomorrow, I do not want to mess up anything before shooting this comp. But in order to do so, you would have to turn the trigger at a certain angle in order to deactivate the spring tension inside of the trigger housing. That is a detail strip of your Glock 19 or any Glock model made by Glock. The next thing I'm going to do is going to be reassembly. So in reverse order, I'm going to put the trigger back in the weapon system. That click ensures that the piece is already fully seated inside of the gun. I'm going to line up my trigger with the pinhole. It's probably going to come out of place, but you just want to make sure that you're doing everything right. Next is going to be the block. The block needs to align inside of the trigger and the lower receiver itself. 
Once those pieces have then located themselves back inside properly, I'm then going to add the trigger housing pin back in to hold the trigger housing in properly. Making sure everything's lined up, it's not. More. All right, that's a good alignment. Next is going to be the uh, slide lock lever. Slide lock lever will locate itself. Correction. Slide lock lever goes in before the block. Apologies on that. So slide lock lever is in, the block is in. I'm then going to put the trigger pin back in. Remember the angle that you need to position. There we go. Make sure you don't try and hammer that part. You don't want to bend any springs or metal portions. And then finally, the block pin. Once all the pins have been returned in their proper locations, I'd just like to do a quick check of everything, make sure everything sits right. That's just my preference, you don't have to do that. The next thing you're going to do is put your slide back together. Put the slide back on the lower receiver. then you're going to conduct a functions check. Now a proper functions check is you're going to take a dry fire shot. You're going to rack the weapon system, reset the trigger. Now the inside trigger portion is your safety. So you're going to simply hold the side without holding the safety, making sure the weapon does not fire. Your safety still works. For good measure, I take another shot again, rack, Reset the trigger, gun resets. Final step for me, since I like to be a cool guy, is I'm going to put my battery pack back on my red dot. Which is fun lighting up the threads. I'm gonna ensure my red dot still works. Cool, it's still on. I can still lollipop off of my front side post. And I will be ready for the competition tomorrow. Thank you for a good class. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day.